Hey everyone, it's Kenji. I'm gonna cook some sweet potatoes. Uh, so this is probably the simplest recipe I've ever done on this channel. Um, the reason I'm making it so simple is because as you can see, I've got a new camera set up and I'm just kind of messing around today. Um, also, I need to cook sweet potatoes for a recipe I'm working on. Um, I'm making these kind of Thanksgiving hot pocket things for as a leftovers recipe for the New York Times. Um, the way I like to cook sweet potatoes, I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways you can cook sweet potatoes, obviously. Um, when I roast them, I like to just leave the skins on. All I did was wash these uh, under some running water in the sink just to get the excess dirt off. And then I'm cutting them into planks that are about, you know, a third to a half inch thick or, or, thick or so at a slight bias. Eh, actually, at a pretty strong bias so that you get a nice bit of surface area. And the idea is that we're going to brown these on a tray and I want to have plenty of surface area for browning so that they get nice and sweet and we take advantage of those natural sugars that the sweet potatoes have. Um, by the way, sweet potatoes, I mean, a lot of people will tell you, oh no, they're not really, uh, you know, people call them yams and people will say, oh no, they're not really yams because yam, yams are actually some sort of, a, a different sort of very starchy um, African root vegetable. Um, on the other hand, I think calling sweet potatoes Potatoes is probably like the biggest disservice that has ever been done to them because I always get questions uh, Whenever I post a potato recipe a regular potato recipe people say oh, can I do this with sweet potatoes? Um, and honestly sweet potatoes don't really cook much like regular potatoes because they are much uh, More full of sugar less starchy more sugar um, And so really they cook more similar to, similarly to something like a winter squash like a butternut squash or an acorn squash um, so Sweet potatoes, honestly, I feel uh, they're not right when you call them yams. They're also not right when you call them potatoes. Um, they're, they're just kind of their own separate thing. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm taking these slices. We're going to toss them with some olive oil. I might have too many for the tray I have right now, actually, so I'm just doing this in my little toaster oven. But a little bit of olive oil, just enough to coat them. Pinch of salt. And some black pepper. You could use white pepper. I'm using black. You can use no pepper if you want. All right, and I'm just going to toss these. And the idea is I want to coat each piece on all sides with oil. Um, oil, you know, when you're, when you're cooking, the reason you toss things with oil is that it distributes heat evenly over the surface so that things brown evenly. Um, it also pro provides like a layer. It's almost like a, like a raincoat, but in reverse. Um, it's actually, you know, similar to how like... Uh, you know, leaves have this kind of waxy cuticle on them that prevents uh, rain from getting in and moisture on the inside from getting out. The oil on a, the oil on a, uh, a roasted vegetable or say even like a roasted chicken is going to do something similar, which is going to pre prevent the uh, moisture on the inside from escaping too rapidly. Um, and so you don't end up with a sort of dry leathery surface. Instead, you end up with a nice sort of brown, evenly cooked surface. You can, of course, use these end pieces if you want. I'm going to probably throw those into a uh, pot of boiling water and serve them to my dog later because he loves sweet potatoes. All right. So in my toaster oven, I've got it set at 400 degrees. I've got a pan. Sheet tray preheating. Sometimes I preheat it, sometimes I don't. I do find they come out a little better when it's preheated. They get a little bit more browning. Um, and so now I'm just gonna lay these out in a single layer. Very simple. You can hear that sizzle as soon as they go on. That's a good sign. These are gonna brown nicely. They're gonna be less likely to stick. Yeah, we can probably squeeze all of these on here. They're not going to all cook perfectly evenly, but we'll squeeze them on anyway. Because I hate leaving like just a couple stragglers behind. All right, so I'm going to lay as many flat as I can, and then the rest I will kind of let them ride up the edges a little bit like this, and they'll cook just fine. This, is, this feels like playing one of those, uh, you know, like when you go to the... Um, the arcade, you know, or the, the, the casino, and they have those machines that push the coins back and forth, and you drop a quarter down, and when you put one quarter down, it pushes the ones off the back. That's what this feels like. All right, so they're kind of Tetris together there. Uh, the only other thing I'm doing, I got some time sprigs. I pulled these out of the garden. Don't have to do time sprigs. You could also do, uh, you know, something like sage or rosemary, parsley, no herbs at all is also totally fine. Um, sweet potatoes have a lot of great flavor on their own, so you don't really have to do too much to them. All right, so this is really just gonna sort of perfume the potatoes as they cook. So it'll be a sort of subtle, timey aroma. Just a little bit of time, just, just like what this recipe takes. All right, so this is going into toaster oven, 400 degrees. Those are probably gonna take, oh, I don't know, about 20 minutes or so. Um, 
These potatoes are done. Done enough. So here's the interesting thing. So these potatoes, I'm doing them sort of the quick and easy way because I got two kids at home and I do most things the quick and easy way these days. Um, if you like your sweet potatoes extra, extra sweet um, and flavorful without adding any extra sort of sugar to it um, or any, you know, something like honey or maple syrup, I'm gonna add some maple syrup to these, but if you like them to be naturally sweeter, you can use the power of science and biology to help you do that. Um, so sweet potatoes have an enzyme in them that breaks down some of their starches and converts them into sugars. Um, so it'll actually make them sweeter over time. And that enzyme is most active up until it hits around 150 degrees Fahrenheit after which time it gets deactivated by the heat. So what you can do is you can take those sweet potatoes, uh, cover them with water that's been heated to about 160 degrees or so, so it drops down to maybe around 150. Um, and what that does is that puts those enzymes into overdrive uh, so that the starches of the sweet potato convert into sugars. Then you drain them off, roast them like this. You can roast them even a little bit longer and they will become extra sweet. They'll caramelize more on their surface. You see, these ones are a little bit caramelized. If you were to treat them with uh, hot water first, they would become very caramelized. Um, um, and you get sort of this natural sweetness without having to add any sugar or anything like that. In this case, however, though, I'm doing this the quick and easy way, which means I'm going to get the sweet potatoes off this tray into a bowl. And I'm going to toss them. You can, of course, serve them just as is, but I'm going to add a little bit of maple syrup. I'm from New England, you know, and so I love the flavor of maple syrup. You could also use a little bit of honey. You could use something like agave nectar. Um, and if you want to add fresh herbs at this point, you could do that as well. You know, chopped parsley, something like that would be great in here. Chop fresh thyme. I'm just going to add about a teaspoon, teeny little bit. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. About a teaspoon. Don't want to overwhelm it. Just enough to give it a little bit of maple flavor and a little bit of extra sweetness. All right. And that is it. Real simple roasted sweet potatoes. What do you think? <laughs> Here. Roasted sweet potatoes. All right, let's try one, huh? Ooh, these are gonna be hot, I can tell. <laughs> Ooh, real good, <laughs> real hot. Um, all right, guys, gals, non-binary pals, oh, um, I would feed him one, but he's not here. He's upstairs in, uh, in the room with my wife and she's in a meeting, so I can't even go get him. But I'll, he'll get one later, I promise. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.